Understanding the challenges of special libraries. Libraries have formed out of various reasons and needs, often sharing similar issues that plague their growth and development and threaten their survival. However, perhaps unlike its counterparts of academic, public, or school libraries, special libraries find themselves in unique positions that demand creativity, innovation, and quality service. Over time, the sector has grown into a mixed bag of information centers representing corporations, nonprofits, museums, and government agencies. The diversity that exists among special libraries is plentiful. So are the challenges. One of the biggest threats to special libraries, as well as any library, is survival. What can special libraries do to promote their services, to show their relevancy in an ever-changing world? How can they meet the demands of their stakeholders? Special libraries are addressing many challenges over the next five years. They will fight their biggest battles with issues that relate to service, stewardship, and literacy and learning. Despite the variation that may exist in special libraries, one asset that has contributed to their survival has and continues to be service. Gorman reminds us that librarianship is defined by service and states, quote, every aspect of librarianship, every action that we take as librarians can and should be measured in terms of service, unquote. However, the challenge presented here is how can we measure service? While there are some quantitative measures that can be taken, it can be difficult to measure some dimensions of service, particularly those connected with the human element. Outreach is yet another component to service that can be challenging as well for special libraries. Those working within the sector should get outside of the building and converse with the community members to determine how they can best meet the needs for their patrons. Libraries are no longer considered a brick and mortar, but an avenue to gain information and resources via online, through outside programs, and development opportunities and applications. <clears throat> when considering service, professionals should adhere to a simple tip. Always treat others as how you would want to be treated. Get to know your community so that you can foster healthy and productive relationships, which will in turn bring more membership, support, and recognition and understanding of the value of your organization. Knowing your community will allow you to offer the best service to the people that matter the most. It will bring new ideas, programs, accessibility, and growth. Long-term plans should involve constant evaluation of offered services, interactions between staff and users, and opportunities for development. Because service can be difficult to measure, libraries should, gain, should again engage with the community and ask for feedback, give surveys, and pursue training opportunities throughout the organization. Crawford emphasizes that the best example of local work is the, <clears throat> is the creation and management of spaces. Specialists can create effective spaces by paying attention to the geographic, disciplinary, and cultural elements that define them. Specialists should be prepared to assist patrons with research. They should be highly familiar with their collections and how to obtain information by asking the right questions. They should utilize soft skills, be comfortable working alone and in team settings, and explore the cultural diversity that exists in their environments. Professionals can gain more fluidity in these areas by attending classes, seminars, and writing courses. Gorman states, quote, I would suggest that one could not find a better expression of service ethic than bringing familiarity with the human record and how to use it effectively to those who really need it, unquote. Special librarians practice stewardship by preserving the human record for others' benefit. Unfortunately, this mission is becoming more complicated as we approach the forthcoming. Recent discussions in the library and information science field have revolved around the future of libraries and information specialists place within. With the influx of online resources, journals, and ebooks, some have gone so far as to say that there will be no need for the physical library as almost anything can be attained digitally. Crawford offers a positive view that the, quote, introduction of digital technologies has not changed the essential nature of the library, but has created a path of increased vitality and long-term viability, unquote. One of the tasks of the librarian is to preserve the human record and to ensure that future generations will have access to our current and past history. Gorman suggests that we should, quote, do everything we can to preserve significant record knowledge and information in such a manner that is available in an authentic and fixed form, not just to the next generation, but for the indefinite future, unquote. 
Information specialists will be best prepared for this challenge by creating collections that are multiverse, fit their patrons' needs, and raises interest within the community. Long-term plans to approach this challenge should include professional development and continued education. Information specialists working within this sector will benefit from joining professional organizations like the flagship Special Library Association, SLA. Murray also recommends collaboration with other like-minded organizations, especially academic libraries. Facing a, quote, epidemic of special library closures, shrinking membership in their professional association, SLA, and increasing pressure on the surviving special libraries to do more with less, unquote. Special librarians could find allies in the unexpected academic library sector who also find themselves endangered. One of the biggest challenges for special libraries is encountering obstacles to literacy and learning. How can professionals be effective teaching users when there is so much information out there? Even 10 years ago, Eisenberg effectively demonstrates what we already know has happened in our society today, <clears throat> information overload. Eisenberg <clears throat> reports that more than two thirds of teens said within the last year that they use the internet as their major resource when doing school projects. Equally as shocking is that in a study of 500 websites used by Colorado high school students to perform research, only 27% of the sites were deemed reliable for academic research, also Eisenberg. Children and students are our future. Information specialists have an ethical responsibility to show patrons how to differentiate the noise from value content. ALA states community members should be able to not only read, but should have the ability to, quote, locate, evaluate, and use effectively the needed information, unquote. Information professionals when the special library sector work with patrons in every stage of life. They should be patient, understanding, and open to diversity when addressing literacy and learning. An information center should approach methods for reaching their audience through creativity by incorporating programs like Maker Labs and engaging story times. Even creative displays using already available resources can initiate interest in the library. Long-term plans should entertain collection development and focus on text. And programs, events, and lectures that promote reading are also advised. Gorman emphasizes, quote, We are all involved in the same process, providing the materials, instruction, and assistance that enable individuals and societies to grow and to thrive intellectually. Special libraries are not alone in their fight for survival. Information centers and organizations are constantly dealing with old and new challenges. However, specialists within this sector often have unique skills and attributes that can prepare them for these undertakings. The plan suggested to combat these challenges are multi-beneficial. Simple steps can provide stewardship service and increase literacy and learning. Being considered essential is not enough to guarantee support. Anderson states, quote, what will de determine our future is not whether we and our services are essential in fact, but whether we are seen by our stakeholders as more essential than the other essential programs and projects that are competing for the same resources, unquote. Special librarians will be most prepared to demonstrate their value by using their skills and attributes to face these challenges.